Hi everybody, welcome back to Big Geeky Couch. I'm Kit, that's Keith, that's Dave, that's Chad. We're always here, you're always here. Which camera do I even look at actually? This one, okay, sorry, that's it looks up. Sorry, it was pointing, it's pointing down. I was like, is that Dave's crotch? We're not cutting that out. No, that's good, no, that's good, it's a good intro. We're, we're back, we're back. We filmed this episode more than once, not more than twice until now, but it's been quite an issue getting it out and we're we're not sorry for it because this is free, so <laughs> I don't care. But today we're reviewing The Big White Ass by Maximilian Uriarte. It's actually called The White Donkey, but I like that title, <laughs> but it's a, that's for a very different thing. It's by Maximilian Uriarte. He's an actual U.S. Marine Corps cartoonist. Um, he has done a comic called Terminal Lance, which is a Marine Corps-themed comic strip that's run in Marine Corps. Well, they have their own little newspaper that they distribute, and he does cartoons that were very popular in there. Then they were popular on the internet, and then he's like, hey, what if I did a comic? So he made this book, and we're going to be reviewing it today because uh, it's really interesting. Are you going to tell us what it's about? What it's about is actually just Maximil- <laughs> The Marines! It's about him being a Marine. Maximilian, it's about him, basically. I mean, the main character's name is Abe, but it's very clearly a stand-in for the author in a lot of ways, and it's- I think it's what makes the comic very authentic, is it is his experiences, thoughts in the field, etc. And they're- and- and- and-, and, and I'll, ugh, Sorry, really, but all think, my words there. That's alright. I'll pick it up from there. Thank you. I think authentic is a really good word for this book, because- like, I've never been in the military, officially, and uh, you get the idea from this of like going through the whole training experience and the deployment, and I, it just feels very realistic. Like, if you don't know what it's like to be in the military, which most of us don't, and you want to maybe relate to someone who's been through it. Or at least, yeah, or at least, yeah, understand what they're talking about. This yeah. is a good way to look at it. It's not just someone's, just a friend's anecdote. It's a fully illustrated walkthrough of military life of training, deployment, and then kind of the after effects of deployment as well. Yeah. It's interesting because it, it's not heavy handed, but at the same time, like by the end of the book, you get a lot of it's psychological in, insight. You get invested in this yeah. book because it, it seems very just light and kind of like this military life. It seems very slice of life for a long time. And then it very suddenly isn't. And you're like, oh shit. <laughs> And I think you guys all know what part I'm talking about. Well, yeah. uh, dude, the yeah. thing the thing with this book is, and I'm going to start at this, I have a very high respect for the Marines. My mom is a Marine. She's phenomenal um, when it comes to everything. She's tough. She's loving. But she also knows when, you know, when things get tough, or she's, I guess, like a tough love mom. When things get tough, so send in the most. I have a very high respect for the Marines. One of the reasons why I love this book yeah. is that it is exactly what you guys said, was it is a slice of life of the Marines. And I understand why a lot of people wouldn't like this book. Well, it's also, because... Slice of Life usually implies very non-heavy-handed content. And I wouldn't say this is heavy-handed in a it's, bad way, but it's it's heavy and heartfelt it's, content, so... Right, but I always look at Slice of Life as, like, it's, like, real. Like, this is something that you could believe as well. Like, it's something that... It's very down-to-earth. You're like, it's something relatable and down-to-earth. Um, so, White Donkey, to me... Is kind of personal. It's very. I mean, personal. like it's incredibly personal, and it's because I grew up as a as as an army as a marine. As like, a marine. <laughs> well, as a marine, like I grew up as a marine, and it was awesome. No, I grew up like my my grandfather was in the was in the army. My uncle was in the marines as well. My I think my great grandfather was in the navy. But anyway, they were the not. Did so they great see a lot of white donkeys? Um, they saw a lot of. We're not getting hey, into the navy. Hey, the navy seals are tough too. <laughs> yeah, like right after were, I yes. read, the, right after I read um, this, I read American Sniper, and that guy was a seal. And man, the shit they go through is crazy like, too. The entire thing about this book is that it's an incredible life-changing event from. Join the Marines for because when Abe gets in there, all he's looking is for thrills. Like, well, not, all he's, he's looking, looking for, he's looking for meaning in yeah. his life. Is this but whole that's thing. not even like I and mean, to me, I don't. I think that's stupid. And there's a scene in there where like really like it it impacts that. Yeah, that's. I don't think the want you, for meaning is stupid, but that maybe finding it by 
Going into a war to murder millions of people. Well, I mean, Abe it's, doesn't murder millions. Well, it's no, it's but, interesting you know because I mean. it really demonstrates Abe is a flawed character, and those flaws catch up with him in a big way. Oh, yeah, uh, they For sure those do. of you who haven't read the book and you're looking forward to it, Abe is the guy who you can relate to who's a douchebag. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's yeah. the reason he's, why... He's, like, he's, an, he's a directionless millennial, essentially. He, well, yeah, like, that's what he is. But then he goes into the Marines to be like, this is something where I'm going to find some meaning in life. And it's like, no, when you don't have any kind of an ethical substructure to your outlook, putting yourself into insane conflict is not going to help. Well, no. And it turns out, yeah, because he ends up not having any coping mechanisms. Yeah. Well, he doesn't, and he also just tries to take advantage of the entire situation and make excuses for himself as to why he's doing this. Yeah. And a lot of these situations... A lot situa of excuses. Like, a lot, the, of excuses. a lot of the excuses are even good. Like, oh, I'm just trying to find meaning in my life, but also, too, I have this girlfriend and I want to make her proud. It's like, that's not even an excuse to join the Marines. Like, or that's not even an excuse to join the military at all. So, like, we have massive so. respect for the Marines, but fuck Abe. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't, like, he is a douchebag. But as me, as somebody who's Dirt reading this book, the Marines, dude, it, yeah. it actually took a more, way bigger <laughs> impact on me. Because I'm reading this, I'm just like, dude, no. First off, my mom was a cook. In the Marines, and that was it. But that was back in the time where I don't think they could fight. They couldn't, they serve couldn't from fight yeah. during that time. But it's still the fact that she sat there and said, "Look, I am gonna go defend my country, or to protect my country, or just go and help out another country, and I'm gonna do this because I want to, Especially in not for anything." Scores. So, so you're I mean, saying that your mom is not Abe? No, my mom is not Abe, and she's, that's not, she's no. Garcia. No, you, uh, dude, Garcia <laughs> fucking okay. Garcia. Oh There's my essentially God. Re there are He's... other characters in this book, but it's really mostly about Abe and Garcia. Everybody else is fairly ancillary. Gar I think their relationship takes center stage, and he has he has that moral grounding. That you brought up where he has that, what did you call it, an ethical substructure? Yeah, like, I did not steal that from ass. JP. Yeah. <laughs> my, Jurassic I made, Park? I formulated that without any other YouTube influence. So smart. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think Garcia is somebody that everybody really needs of when you are kind of being a dick and just make excuses for yourself, they can sit there and say, you should probably look at this another way because you're kind of an asshole. I've told you to shut and, up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, and it's kind of like having a friend like Kit. Yeah. Where it's Am like, I the Garcia? Like, I don't want to uh, think I'm Garcia. Are you the Garcia of the group? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really sure who's I don't, Garcia. Ethical group. substructures, but what are those? Garcia is amazing because of when he's shit very, gets well, real. What? And even just on a, the the basis, though, he's just likable. He is. He's the likable. Like, he's very kind. He's nice. He's like not particularly like. He's not an intellectual or anything. He's just a, he's a nice young man who has a good family and a good relationship yep. and just tries to be a good guy. And he's the optimist. He's like very when optimistic. things get sh when shit hits the fan, he's like, guys, we're either gonna get out of this or we're not gonna get out of it. But either way, everything's gonna be fine. But so, then it's not. But then it's not. But like <laughs> because there's IEDs. Right, and he's yeah. and then he's just kind of like, well, shit happens. But IEDs happen. Right, it happened to me. I love White Donkey. Oh, didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's even See if talk. Would say anything. <laughs> like even the artwork of this book. The artwork is cool. fantastic. The artwork's yeah. cool. It's very clear. Um, there was even a scene it's Dave tight. was just looking at where it was these guys were wrestling and just how well drawn their interactions were of these two well, men just. Grappling was like that's how that would look. The sense of course, of space you was good. laser in on the men grappling. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. this is a bunch of. It's cool hard to men. draw, okay? Like, like you start drawing people entangling, it's like, dude, there's too many limbs there's on not, these fuckers. But there's the way not, they draw the M wraps, oh, they, they look great. The M wraps. And there's not even ass. a lot of really color. The there's not even a lot of color to this oh, book. Like but it works in every near, scene near every scene. page is monochrome, like, and there's usually just one color for a, a chapter or a series of scenes with maybe some highlights for their visors, etc. Um, it's not. It's not. A, it is a book that is in color, but it is not colorful. <laughs> Waiting for the civilian version of that. Of what? Drive the grocery store. <coughs> oh yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> was there a weird sound? Of course, there's a weird sound. We live in well, a no, I was apartment. coughing. That's Did right. you not hear that? I was actually dying because of how yeah, amazing it's the, it's this book the was. screaming sound from my bathroom came back. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but White Donkey is a beautiful book, just from start to finish. It. And it's it, it takes you on this phenomenal adventure it doesn't of a do marine. A, it has no hyperdynamicism. There aren't a lot of like extreme close-ups or weird angles or weird overly kinetic panels. It is very... It's it's shot like a movie. It's, it's, the shot calls are very 
I would say, I guess, it's a cheap word to use, but cinematic, it's, in that it's shot mainly on the level, mid-shots. I think designed, it's... It's designed to look like you're essentially there. Right, there and are, I like I it. There, here's a panelist page, which that's that's pretty cool. You yeah, know. very, uh... What's the name of that like, cartoonist? The one thing is that the meaning... Yeah, sure. Bonitis. Yeah. <laughs> I did, like, one panelist page once for fun. Like <laughs> This book essentially does bring meaning to anybody who would ring the, read this book, I well, think. I don't, it, it might not put meaning in your life, but it would certainly allow you to understand the struggles that people in the military go through that we have or young, just like, well, because any anybody can join the military as long as you pretty much pass the mental and physical requirements. So that doesn't even necessarily mean you are ready to serve in the field. And it no, may not absolutely mean, not. And it can mean you're not ready to come home from being in the field as well, which, you know, PTSD well, is a huge thing, and that's a, that's a big theme in the book, yeah. is him not knowing how to cope with not being on the field of battle. Well, it's also, too, the other side of it is also talked about, too, and very briefly, but it's the other side of the war that nobody really sees. And I we don't really see that a lot in, in today's comic books of, yeah, we get a lot of the American side of it, but we don't really see the other side of it, the Iraqi, yeah, the innocent a, side of it. There's some really and great some looks into the perspective fucking, of people who live in occupied countries. It's like as you get fun this, as it like, is. Like the dialogue in one of the scenes about when he's talking to one of the Iraqi or Afghanistan soldiers, which who cares? Pronounced, Same thing. I don't it's know. Or like Iroquois. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the Iroquois yeah, anyway. people like, are being. He's in this. And the only response he can be like is like, oh, you're trying to find meaning in your life? Well, fuck you, dude. How about this? And he just like drops the mic, for lack of better terms, and I just don't really want to think of a better term. If he literally dropped he the was, mic, that would make He was just holding. <laughs> he was just holding the mic. And well, the, like, the line he damn. uses that I recall that you liked was he's like, well, you're looking for meaning in your life, but, but while you're doing that, you're waging war in my home. And right. It's like, oh. Like, I never, I never thought about like, it. I didn't think about it like Because I was that. like, yeah, that's a good way to find meaning in your life. It's like, well, maybe not shooting a bunch not, of guns in someone else's house. Not shooting a bunch of people, let's There's be honest. surprisingly little action, though. Like, Very little. To me, yep. it's interesting because this book doesn't have a whole lot of, like, gun battles and, like, you know, military... You think yeah. military book, you think, oh, like, bombs and explosions do, yeah. and gunfights and... There's it's almost, not. It's not Dunkirk. <laughs> there's almost none of that, but the thing is, I couldn't put this book down. Like, I I've couldn't. Read it's emotionally yeah, very yes, engaging. Absolutely. So, and like, and I think part of it is that that spell it weaves, where it's it's very slice of life, and then it just keeps very subtly upping the ante until it it cracks. It fucking like, oh. destroys. Well, it like it goes really uphill, where you're kind of expecting. And I love the ending. Like the ending is fantastic. I love good. it because it wasn't something that I was expecting. It's not right. Abe, Abe, just like. He's slowly climbing, slowly climbing. It's like, great, he's kind of becoming not a douchebag. Garcia's there, and then shit happens, and then it, everything just goes, <sighs> and yeah. you're just like, what the fuck just happened? That's it's why, like, and it's, calling it Slice of Life to me seems, because when I think demeaning. of- Yeah, when well, I think of Slice of Life, I think of something that's kind of generally trivial, and this is like the opposite. Well, it's I think, important. I always it's think mean, that Slice, uh, but then again, I've always looked at Slice of Life as something that could be But I think that's why more, it disarms you so much. Yeah. yeah. At least that's how I it I think it, it could be like an anti-Slice of Life, maybe? Ooh, where it's a like- Slice of death. <laughs> slice of death. <laughs> no, like, it's like Slice of Life to me always has been, it's either set in a real period, it's set that. and real, like it's real. it's like it's set and real. It's something that is believable that can happen, and it's somebody's everyday life. Why don't you is, is a real a, slice of death book? Yes, yes, it is. Finally, the genre we all <laughs> didn't know we wanted, all wanted, but wanted. finally have the that slice is. of death. Slice White Donkey is phenomenal, and I expect, I honestly, I would say everybody needs to read White Donkey, or at least somebody who wants an, an opinion on deciding if they want to join the armed forces. Because it gives you an insight on what you're going to expect. Because there's a couple of people in that book that'll say, Oh, we're gonna go and we're gonna kill a bunch of people, but then it's like three hours of just sitting around doing nothing. I wouldn't well, say that. You'll see like, that in a lot of military fiction is they always talk about like, it's surprisingly boring until right, it's not. Like, like, <laughs> and you, you get like the surreal factor of it and it engages you. And I would just really love everybody to read White Donkey. I don't think like, everyone has to read it. I think they but, do. Shout but, out, Dave. Well, that's why we're going to go to war. But if, <laughs> I'm just going to say, if I was, if this was assigned reading in high school, 
and I had to read it, I would actually be like, oh, that was a nice change of pace. Oh, you cool. Know? I got to read a good book. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. It, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Ted Nugent lately, and he would say, this would be a good book to indoctrinate into the American anti-education system. You think so? <laughs> no, just, oh, I, just I was about to say, so that's funny. weird. I just think it's so funny that he says that. Oh, um, huh. No, I mean, this would be... I mean, if you were in some sort of modern military course, this, uh, or if you wanted to take military lit, I guess, if that's a course, I'm sure it is at some college, um, this would be a great uh, addition to that curriculum. See, so, I, just, I think everybody liked it. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, like, I mean, yeah, if you yeah. didn't like this book, I that'd think, be weird. I think really, when it comes to me, I think it had a bigger impact on me, mm -hmm. just because of... Your mom. My mom. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the mom joke is right you, there. You like, were begging for it. Your mom. This whole, I, this whole maybe time, a little like, bit mom, of like, Mom, Somebody needs mom. to make a I am <laughs> sorry, boy. damn it. So, I think it had a bigger impact on me, so yeah, I absolutely loved White Donkey. Oh, uh, I have a cousin in the Marines, so it was had a bigger impact. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, kid! <laughs> One time I saw a Marine, so it had the biggest... <laughs> you saw them at the mall when yeah. they were, like, walking Actually, the I, I do have a cousin who's a Marine, so that's cool. Well, okay. one of my cousins okay. knew a donkey, so... <laughs> oh, I've got seven White Donkey cousins, yeah. <laughs> so, alright guys, so... Next time, we are going to look at... Have a good one. Sorry, I was just going to be a really half-ass closing. So, sorry, director. So, guys, please take a look at White Donkey. We really appreciate it, and... Good job, Max. You know what? Do a closing. That's our opinion on the White Donkey. We'll be back in the future. Later, kids. Like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please. Like, comment, subscribe. You know. Yeah. Title.